Hi guys, how are you today? It's me, Alex, and we're going to have our first live with Dispatch Training Center. I guess we're gonna get a few seconds before we're gonna be streaming on YouTube and Facebook. It should be at the same time. And we're gonna be talking today about how to become dispatcher, what does it take, what skills do you need to have, and also we're going to have a giveaway today. One of you gonna win free dispatch training class and it will be a value of $6.99. To win the class, you guys need to make sure that you do following steps. First, you will need to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Secondary, you need to make sure you subscribe to our Facebook and also our website. You will need to email us to learn dispatch today and tell us why do you want to take dispatch training center? Is it going to improve you? Is it going to change your life? And we're going to make sure we help you out. Well, I see a few people start uh, getting to our life. We're going to give everybody a few minutes. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Elena. We have a few people start watching. Well, I start with the introduction of myself. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, many of you know me as a sassy dispatch girl. And yes, I am sassy dispatch instructor, sassy dispatch every day. I do this every day. Uh, my real name is Alexandra Sokolenko. Most of you guys don't know my name, but I don't mind you calling me sassy dispatch girl. Well, how did I got into this industry? Well, guys, I have not been doing it for all my life. I got to this industry six years ago. I had nothing to do with trucking. I was brought to trucking kind of by chance, and I decided to improve this industry. I will be honest with you. I did lots of mistakes because nobody's teaching you how to be a pro dispatcher. No one's want to share which mistakes not to make when you open your trucking company and how to hire drivers, how important is the safety. So guys, I went through lots and lots of nightmares. So when I am teaching my class, guys, I am not just giving you a theory. I am giving you a real examples of what's going on on everyday basics. I am telling you what not to do, and I will advise you how to avoid mistakes. Because most of you know that trucking is very expensive industry and mistakes are costly. That's why... Two years ago, I decided cre to create classes. And first I was doing them live just for the Chicago people because I am in Chicago. And then, as many of you know, the COVID happened. Hi, uh, Oda. Hi, Dewanda. How are you? So, and for a few months, I was kind of uh, upset because I couldn't see people anymore in my classrooms. And somebody asked me, why don't you do it uh, over Zoom? And it was challenging, guys, but I'm telling you, I am kind of thankful that situation pushed me to create online classes, live online classes. And here I can tell you that's why my classes are different because, because we, are, we are doing classes live. I do have pre-recorded stuff which I send to my students. I do have PDFs, but I do believe in seeing my students, in them watching me, how I answer the phone. Everybody get a chance to make those phone calls. They have a chance to book their first load. They know the equipment. They know the markets. Yes, they do homework. And I uh, really hope that they are doing it not for me, but for themselves. But let's talk about what does it take to be a dispatcher? Well, let's Let's be honest. First, you have to make sure that uh, your communication skills and your multitasking is there, right? Because my students already know. Well, 
do they require to have master's degrees? No. College degrees? No. Of course, it's beneficial if you have any knowledge. It helps you uh, in any business. But do they require you to go to special schooling? No, they do not. Well, you can take classes like we have. Hello, Vlad. But um, not really required. Anybody who has high school diploma can do it. I have this question all the time. Well, I have no experience. Can I start dispatching? Well, this is a tricky question, guys, because uh, a lot of times people go and they will look for dispatcher position and the people will tell them, well, you have no experience. You have no experience. We cannot hire you. But somehow you have to start somewhere. And that was me six, seven years ago when I asked my friends to help me out and everybody was turning me down. They told me, well, it's impossible. You cannot, you cannot really be a dispatcher. And I'm like, why? I know how to negotiate. I speak few languages. I even have two master's degree. I know finance and I run businesses. What is so hard about dispatching? And they say, no, it's impossible. Now I understand why. It's not impossible. It's because trucking is so dynamic and they are so busy with phone calls from brokers, from shippers, from receivers, from drivers. Maybe they get phone calls from uh, people who try to sell them tires, fuel discounts, factory, and they do not have time to teach someone. So usually what happens, you come to the office like that and you are lucky if they're going to tell you, well, you can just sit and watch what I am doing. So I came a few times to dispatch a training uh, office, not training, but dispatch office, and they would put me next to the guy who've been doing it for three, four years, and he's making those phone calls, he's posting drugs, he's calling, he's signing rate confirmation, and then he tell, ask me, Alex, did you get it? Like, no, not really. Why are you doing that? And he's like, well, don't worry about it. Just post the truck, just make the phone call, ask for $2,000. And I said, well, kind of easy, right? You can just ask for money, but why do you ask? Why just $2,000? Why not $3,000? So this can be very confusing. That's why, guys, most of the time they are turning you down. They are turning you down not because you cannot become dispatcher, but just because they don't have time to teach you basics. Even the load boards, how to post the truck, how to delete, how the market changes, what type of equipment we have. We have so many different trailers. We have different trucks. We go to different zones, regions, time zones. We have produce season. We have to know manufacturing. We need to know shippers, receivers. So if somebody does not really have training in the house, does dispatcher really want to share that with you? Even if the person wants to, usually they don't have time because they still have to book the trucks. So guys, I want to make this clear. If you are the person who is not afraid of the phone, if you are the person who can multitask, if you are the person who is a goal oriented, you can become dispatcher. It's not going to happen overnight, but with the proper training, with the basics, with mastering your skills, yes, you can be dispatcher. Look at me. I came here again six years ago. Now I'm running trucking company. I created dispatch training center. I became the national safety director and I am insurance agent and uh, also agent for factory. If I could do it, guys, for sure you can do it. I know that Mr. Salif can do it because he opened his own company, right? And I'm his insurance agent. I know I'm going to call the names because I know Ola right now is in the class. Nada is in the class. The Wanda is in the class. So they already made that decision to become successful. Well, so we already learned that doesn't matter which education you have. It's not necessary to go to special training. Let's keep going. What else is important? What are going to be your responsibility? And later today, we're going to make a difference. Being a dispatcher for the company, company dispatcher, 
and become into this patch as a business, as an independent dispatcher. What is the difference? We're going to talk about it, and I want to make sure you guys understand this. But first, doesn't matter if you are dispatcher for the company or you are independent dispatcher, your duties and responsibilities are going to be the same. First of all, we need to make sure those trucks are moving, right? A, B, C, D. They have to be uh, getting loaded, unloaded, getting reloaded, and we make in circle. All my students, right, Svetlana? Svetlana, no, that it has to be a circle. Svetlana took the class probably, what, a month ago, right? And months, months and a half ago, before finishing the class, she already got a job, and I know that she's doing great. It takes a while, guys. Uh, to become a pro like me, I tell my students, you have to relieve all the seasons. You have to relieve all the holidays. So after one year, we're going to have an extra pro dispatcher, Svetlana, and I know she is going to make sure that she will be as the same as me with a sassy attitude. She's going to learn how to say no to nonsense and how to say yes and how to negotiate. Uh, well, what are you guys going to be doing? You're going to make sure that you monitoring HOS, hours of service. You're going to make sure that you check on the market, right? And people ask, how would I know how to check on the market? Well, I can tell you this, that programs have a lot of tools. Even that, truck stop, they have a lot of tools. In our class, we're going to be learning about each state and zones. And we're going to know why markets shift. Market shifts because due to holidays. Market shifts because... Uh, maybe it's a spot market, again, due to weather, due to holidays, due to the produce season. Right now, produce started in um, in uh, Florida, right? We're going to have uh, cherries starting soon in beginning of June in uh, uh, Washington. California is going to start any week right now. So this is going to affect not just the reefers, not just went to went, but every other equipment. Why? Because People still need to ship uh, freight of all kinds, dry goods. And if produce paying, of course, they have to pay for dry vans as well. Understanding this is going to help you to become a dispatcher. What else do we have to do? Well, we need to make sure we pre-plan, especially if we're going to go to the area which is uh, not easy to get out. And before we book the load, before we sign rate confirmation, we're going to make sure we check what's going to be there tomorrow. What's going to be there in two days? How many loads do we have close to our delivery? And sometimes, guys, we're going to start from a second, uh, second load. First, we're going to book the load from the dead area and then connect uh, load the strong load because believe me to go to that area you can always find a good pain load but the pro dispatcher will make sure he can get out from that uh he can get out from that area so once again uh we're gonna continue with the duties well what else we need to do as a dispatcher we need to make sure we track our drivers we give updates to our brokers, our shippers, our receivers. Why is that important? Well, it's important because you guys are going to try to build a relationship. They want to find reliable, loyal carriers. They want to work with the dispatchers who give them updates on time. And as my girls know in class, I say, you have to be the one in the morning sending updates while well, our truck got loaded everything is on schedule while well, truck check-in we waiting to unload if something happened during the night you will be the one reaching out and rescheduling you're not gonna wait for a broker to call you first this is the worst thing you can do and again as i always say it's trucking things happen sometimes driver forgot to wake up on time Sometimes we have breakdowns. Sometimes we maybe did not calculate our deadhead. And as 
my students probably laughing all the time, right? When I tell them that we're not the liars, but we are good storytellers. Guys, I am not telling you to lie, but I am telling you that sometimes you will need to make sure that the load is not going to cancel on you. So if you know that you're almost done unloading and they asking you, and you know you have three hours or two hours to pick up, is your truck empty? Well, yes, it's empty. You know he's unloading. But you're not going to tell something unrealistic. If you're looking at um, GPS and your truck is still 100 miles away from his delivery, you're not going to tell the broker, well, my guy is empty because this is this is already lying because a lot of times you're not going to be able you're not going to be able to uh pick up the load what else is important well you need to make sure that you keep your drivers safe and guys brokers will push you brokers will tell you unrealistic uh delivery time too too tight transit too long, right? You need to make sure that your driver can make this transit. The good dispatcher will never hope for miracle. That's why you guys need to realize the miles, the traffic, the area he's going through. Because, for example, driving through Chicago at 5 p.m. and 4 p.m., it's different than uh, driving somewhere in Nebraska at 4 or 5 p.m., right? Driving through Newark, New Jersey, or Atlanta, or California traffic, it's different. So sometimes at Google mi uh, Miles, the 20, 30 miles, it's a different story. So you have to be realistic. Uh, most of the time, if you guys still using the Google Maps, well, it's good for the beginning, but you should be using probably um, uh, PC Miler or any professional software, the uh, maps. So you can see the real traffic, you can see what's really going on but again we need to make sure the drivers come first so we need to understand how to deal with breakdowns right we need to understand what has to be done if we have to call road assistance so you need to know your equipment first not just that he's a dry one not that he's just a reefer but what kind of truck he has is that volvo is that freight liner which year? Because when the driver is under stress, guys, he's going to reach out to you. And when he's reaching out to you, he doesn't have time to tell you, well, I, I have Peterbilt 2007. You should have the equipment list. You should know how to calm the driver uh, and how to help him. So you need to make that list. For people who are working for the bigger companies, of course, you are using the softwares, right? uh tracking management softwares tms it depends how big your company for smaller carriers guys uh hi emmanuel how are you uh for smaller carriers guys you're gonna start with just simple uh, excel spreadsheets right because you dispatching two three guys and sometimes you cannot afford to pay another bill for software or your carrier cannot afford it well you need to make sure you communicate that. If you have any breakdowns, what do we need to do? Well, we need to reschedule appointment. We need to make sure, do we have to look for a delivery truck? Do we have to rent the truck? Or maybe we have another truck in our company who can re-deliver. Because guys, sometimes breakdowns happen and it takes two, three days, sometimes weeks to fix the truck. You do not want the commodity sitting there on your truck. I know it's going to be expensive. I know sometimes you will need to pay for the rental trucks. That's why I advise for you to make sure you have agreement, which you sign before. Penske, for example, rental, they are nationwide. If you already created account, if they already verify you, it just take an hour, hour and a half to get a truck and you can re-deliver come back and then maybe your driver has to wait maybe sometimes he has to fly home because sometimes breakdowns can take a while it depends also on the area on a truck so you need guys to do to do all those things well i see we have ryan ryan is our previous student who just joined and works for um 
Polish company, right? In Chicagoland. So what do they do? They go from Chicago to Atlanta, Atlanta to Chicago, kind of dedicated uh, runs. Most of the stuff, they uh, combine in LTLs. And my students already know LTL, less than truck load. So they have warehousing, right? They, they combine the loads and they deliver them. And this is kind of easy because at this point, uh, yes, ma'am, just finished my shifts. Yes. So Ryan came with no experience. Ryan had uh, exp experience with finance and business. He's a business person, but trucking was brand new to him. And he'd been a very, very good, responsible student. And look at that. He also, like Svetlana, he got a job before even finishing our class. He is on the way to learn. He is on a way to improve because he's a business person. We're going to talk about he is a company dispatcher now. But in his plans, like same as other people who I know, they want to have independent dispatch service. So let's talk about this. Company dispatcher, independent dispatch service. How is this different? Well, let's start from this. If you work as a company dispatcher, you are an employee, right? So that means most of the time, even though sometimes they let you work from home, you will need to come into office from seven to five or seven to four, whatever hours, but usually in dispatch, it's seven to five. In this case, guys, if you're looking to find a job, make sure you live close by. Don't kid yourself, traffic, time you have to be on time seven o'clock so if you live too far it's gonna take lots of your time consider that also you're gonna be done when it's a traffic time if you live in a bigger city also consider that you do not want to waste three hours a day driving to your work so find something closer to you this is my advice secondary well you're gonna be uh starting fresh well, if you came and take my classes or anybody else's classes, you already will know some basics, right? So basics are uh, basics are going to be, you're going to know already load boards. You're going to know how to use the tools. You're going to know how to check the market. You will know how to uh, do setups, right? Broker agreements, how to do them via PDF, via the link. You will know how to track your drivers. You will know your HOS hours if you went through any training. And if you're not, hopefully they're going to teach you all this. And then they will assign you two, three trucks, four trucks from the beginning, and you're going to start dispatching. You are an employee. After months or two or three, when you're going to get really comfortable, well, you will need to renegotiate your beginning uh, salary. Because from my experience, I mean, I don't know in other states, but Chicagoland, pretty much, they start you from 700 to 850 a week, and you're going to be dispatching from three to five trucks. Well, this is good for months or two, right? But guys, don't short yourself, uh, don't sell yourself short, sorry, because trucking is stressful. You multitasking, you making lots of money for owner operators, you putting your responsibility, your efforts into this. So I would say after five, six trucks, if you can easily dispatch six, eight trucks and your growth is good and your rate per mile is at least on national data, I really think you should revisit and you should be compensated at least from 1,000 to 1,300 a week. This is one thing, right? So this is a company employee, guys. You can grow with a company. Hopefully, they're going to appreciate you. Can you really dispatch 20 trucks? Can you really dispatch 30 trucks? Well, not really. Physically, when you have already experienced, when you become a pro, the most you can do, good, good job, making good profit, I would say from 12 to 14 trucks. After that, it's become becoming very hard or you start just booking loads to get rid of the trucks and that's not what i'm teaching i'm teaching you how to make sure that your guys are making money because they are on the road they deserve 
to make money and they deserve the best negotiation you can give them. Well, you can also get an assistant. At some point, I was dispatching 19 reefers, but I had an assistant. So I was booking, I was negotiating, but she was doing all the paperwork. So this can go that way as well. But let's stop at that eight, 10 trucks. That's usually what dispatcher dispatch, being a company dispatcher. Well, this is for people who start, who want to learn, and maybe who is not comfortable of running their own business. Well, for people like uh, uh, open-minded and kind of business-oriented like I am, I am not the person who really works for anyone. So I came to this business with a mind that I will be running my own company or I will be running independent dispatch service, which I end up doing. So after working for actually two and a half months, I did open my own MC and I uh, start hiring owner operators. I bought my own equipment and also I got my dispatch service. And now, as many of you know, I also have a dispatch training center. Well, people ask, how do I start independent dispatch service? Is it possible to start independent dispatch ser service if I am outside of the USA? Well, you can dispatch from anywhere as long as you have what? Basic English, right? And when I'm talking about basic English, I'm talking communication skills. You have to be able to answer the phone. You have to be able to uh, finish paperwork. You have to be able to communicate with the drivers. So this is probably um, uh, intermediate level of English. People ask me, well, I do have accent. I don't think if that's possible. Well, guys, I do have accent. I've been living in America for 22 years. It's not going anywhere. Sometimes it's getting worse if I speak a lot of Russian, Ukrainian. Sometimes it's getting better. It switches. It depends what I am uh, doing for for. <laughs> For, for a few days. But the main thing is you need to make sure you have some computer skills, right? And by computer skills, we don't have to be a software engineer, right? We just need to make sure we can work with live load boards. It's very simple. If you guys practice, if you guys practice, you can make sure, you can make sure that you know how to post, how to delete, how to finish setups. And my students, we practice that in a the class. They get the PDFs. They get the real broker carrier agreements. And hopefully, by the end of the class, they're going to be finishing them. Because it should not take more than 5, 10 minutes. The faster you finish that setup, the faster you're going to be able to book that load. Analytical thinking. Well, guys, you do need to have plan A, B, and C. Analytical thinking, how are you going to uh, improve that? Well, you're going to look at the data, right? You're going to look at what is the rate per mile for this week, for the last two weeks, for the months. What is we having? What is the density of the trucks and loads, right? So you're going to start improving your thinking. What should I do? And then when you dispatch, you're going to learn, well, when I go to East Coast, I better per book the loads from East Coast, especially on Monday. If I am in Chicago area after Easter, I should have probably per book my truck on Friday, right? Because what's happening? Well, on Friday, market was paying because a lot of people came and stay home. On Mondays, they all realized I have to go. So today, if anybody was dispatching, I was dispatching in the morning, it was tougher to find a good paying load. Although we still we still do our job, we found the loads. Pre-planning. You guys going to learn how to work around holidays, how to work in a high market. On Saturday, we actually had the class. And Ola and uh, Nadia and Davonda, they were witnessing what's happening when you're in a good area. Even on Saturday, right? Our phone was blowing. They were offering us... 8000 7000 even $10,000 because we post the truck in Miami where produce season started. So working in a high-paying uh, area. 
Does it mean that you have to pre-book? Not really. You can book all the same day. But the thing is, you need to make sure that you make at least a few phone calls, you answer a few phone calls so you can see what is the best load. Because sometimes that 8,000 sounds so good, but you know what? 4,000 on 600 miles sounds even better because it's going to take you one day to get to Atlanta. You can reload, come back to the hot market, get another load, and in three, four days, you're going to have 8,000 instead of one, uh, one load, which maybe have a longer transit. So my suggestion for any, any new guys, any new guys, you do need to compare. And especially when they call in you guys, you have all the power. When they call in you, you can have that sassy attitude, right, Ola? You can say, well, hold on. Let me check. Let me see what's going on there. Let me see what we're going to do there on Wednesday on because they are calling you. So here again, how important is it to post your trucks, even if it's for tomorrow, even if it's for Wednesday, because when they call you, you have all the power. And this is one of the mistakes dispatchers do. Why? Because they want to eliminate phone calls. They don't want an extra phone call, but this is wrong. You always have to post your equipment. You have to let everybody know this is going to be a guy uh, on Friday. And he might be early truck. He might be late truck. He might have e-tracks. He might be tanker indoors. Maybe he has something which other people don't have. Maybe he's a space saver reefer, right? So e-tracks, especially for flower loads. Maybe he has tarps when he has chains. Maybe he's a specialty guy, Conestoga, because it's not many out there. So you guys need to put all that in the comments. And my students are practicing that. We go over that. You just need to remember, guys, especially for people who start, like Ryan, Svetlana, don't think that you were supposed to do it once or twice. You have to do it all the time. You have to choose what is the most important for this guy. Well, maybe because he is empty night before. Maybe because he's a tanker indoors. And of course, we have to learn how to find the loads the closest possible uh, distance to our delivery. Why? Again, no one pays for dead miles. Secondary, we are on electronic logbooks. We need to make sure we unload, load, and we keep going. So analytical thinking is a must. A, B, C. I always have plan B. I always have plan C. I always have plan D. Usually, I don't really go to plan C because my plan B usually takes over. 90% of my plans are A. But again, it's going to take you time to think this fast. Sometimes people say, well, Alex, you're thinking like this, boom, 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 boom. Well, guys, because I've been doing it for a while and you guys going to get there. It's just the time and skills and repetition. Repetition, doing the same thing over and over and over. And what other thing, guys? Remember your blacklist. Make sure you guys start putting, well, we're not going to go to this uh, food lions. Well, Publix, do not unload us. Maybe when I hear Publix, I will not take a chance because three loads already, we went there and it took them six, eight hours. So you will be keeping your black and white list for shippers, for receivers, for brokers. And multitasking, yes. Yes, uh, Ryan, multitasking, it's its a must. Even, even right now, like, you know, I have two screens. I have to read your comments. I have my private chat for my assistant. She's trying to write something, multitasking. I need to make sure you guys can hear me and I can keep going. Yes, multitasking is a must. Well, language skills. Uh, it's very beneficial for some people to be multilingual because... Of course, drivers, if they have the dispatcher who speaks their own uh, language, for example, Romanian, uh, Russian, Ukrainian, Georgian, um, any other Spanish, of course, they're going to be more comfortable. But as long as you guys can communicate. And sometimes 
if you get to the relationship with between you and driver and it's not really working out because sometimes guys it's it's hard to get along with people right you need to make sure you communicate and you guys solve the problem because if you want to become a pro dispatcher if you want to succeed you have to be a team driver and dispatcher are a team we are not an enemies we can help each other because drivers can help you with for example telling you well maybe next time we are not gonna take this road because it's not that easy to get to venachi to pick up or chila washington in the winter well maybe we should not go to west virginia because of the black eyes you guys gonna learn all the roads maybe we're not going to uh junction in uh colorado because this is called the road of death all those little things you guys gonna learn with experience but please educate yourself do not practice on somebody else trucks those drivers need to make money company needs to make money that's why uh I mean, it doesn't have to be our class, but please just educate yourself. Educate yourself about the tools, cost of the tools, your roads, permits, right? You need to know the regulations because trucking is very regulated industry. Not that we just have to follow FMCSA, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. We have to follow united state department of uh, transportation in each state we have to follow federal highway administration right when we are dealing with the food and everything we have to follow regulations and rules for uh federal food and drug administration then we have our local rules even with parking non-parking we have so many rules and who needs to know that do I have to know because I'm the owner of the company? Well, I hope I do, right? Because I'm running the trucking company. You as a dispatcher have to know those rules as well. Drivers need to know them. And you guys can help each other. Well, what else are we could talking about? Uh, interpersonal skills. Again, sometimes it's hard to get along, guys. Sometimes we all humans, we all have our egos and believe it or not, I am a very strict, very no BS woman. So it's not too easy to deal with me, right? <laughs> Ryan probably says, yeah, she has a sassy attitude. Well, uh, not because I'm that pushy, but sometimes you have to share that knowledge. You have to guide your driver, but not in a mean way. So yes, yeah, sometimes somebody has to be in charge. And a lot of times, uh, I hear the story, well, I cannot be dispatcher anymore. And I hear that from uh, girls uh, who start dispatching and they are dispatching owner operators. And I'm like, why not? And they're like, well, because I cannot do this. They call me every time. So when you book in the load, they want you to be on the phone with them while booking the load. Guys, it's impossible. You as a dispatcher, you have to tell them that they have to do their job as a drivers pick up the load on time deliver on time do the pti check the paperwork making sure that those bill of lettings are clean no shortage no overage no damage but you as a dispatcher you have to make decision you are in the front of computer you know what's going to happen there tomorrow in Kentucky. You know what's going to happen there two days later in Nebraska. You know if market is paying in Washington, if market is paying in Miami. If you guys going to be trying to dispatch five, six owner operators, and every time you pick up the phone, you have to call them and ask, well, uh, Mike, are you going to take this load? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Guys, yes you'd better quit this job because it's going to be impossible it's going to be impossible for you to be a pro dispatcher they have to trust you and yes sometimes you will make some mistakes but you will get better but if you just in the middle to make phone call and relay information to owner operator who is not sitting in front of the computer who does not really know what is the highest pain load and why we're going to choose Kentucky over Missouri, guys, you're never going to succeed. 
And dear owner operators, if you watching me, please let us do our job. You can advise us, well, I need to be home by Friday. I am not going to certain states. My equipment cannot scale more than 45, the, the 42. Advise us, but let us do our jobs. Otherwise, why do you need us? If I just have to answer phone and connect you together, well, this is not dispatching. This is like running around, you know? I mean, that's not dispatchers, but that's what's happening. I've seen it so many times. I've seen so many good people who had a really good opportunities. They had all the skills, but they got burned out because they got tired of listening to owner operators. No, not good enough. No, ask for more. And usually, when they ask you, they tell you unrealistic prices. If the load is 3,600 and you know that the highest paying load on the market is 3,700 and then you call your driver uh, and he's asking, oh, just ask for 5,000. What's going to happen, guys? Well, first, most of the time, they're going to hang up on your dispatcher. She's going to try to call again because now you still want that load, right? She's calling again. Do you think they're going to pick up her phone number? No, they already see on caller ID that it's her calling again. You change your mind because why? Because you cannot just think about money wise. You have to say, well, why is she asking for this money? And what are we going to do tomorrow? This is a totally different. Probably we're going to have a life just for owners, operators. And I want to and I want to hear what they have to say. But my point is, guys, let's be a team. We do our job as a dispatchers. We educate ourselves. We understand what market doing. You guys are going to help us out, guiding us about shippers, receivers, the roads. And together, we can manage how to work. Well, uh, let's see a few questions before we're going to continue. Sure, 0% of freight rate is the best. Thanks for me. I ask, what do you mean by charging carriers? Again, if we are dispatch service, independent dispatch service, I don't have to have my own motor carrier uh, MC. I don't really have to open trucking company. I can provide service. So I can find a motor carrier who maybe have one truck, two trucks, 10 trucks, 20 trucks, and they're going to hire me as a dispatch service. I will be calling, representing their company, and I will charge the fee. Well, we have lots of outsourcing going on. We have lots of outside of the country dispatching services, right? Well, the fee goes like this. I've seen some people charging from 1% go up to 10%. This is kind of independent on your experience on how many trucks are you going to be dispatching. If the carrier is a new carrier, for example, if I take a new carrier who have been in business just one day, it's a lots of phone calls have to be made. I need to do all the setups. Nobody wants to work with a new carrier besides maybe TQL, Convoy, Siege Robinson. Then we have to survive 30, a few other brokers, Ryan Transportation. Then we have to survive 30 days. In 30 days, we can add, for example, Coyote. We can add some uh, tree line logistics. Then we have to survive 60 days. Finally, we have few more brokers. But the hardest part is three months. 90 days opens door for us. So after 90 days, it's going to be easy. So if I have to dispatch guy who had his MC for two years with a good safety and the guy who has one day in the business, do you really think my charges are going to be the same? No, not really. They're not going to be the same. So that's why it depends on the situation. If you are going to be working for the guy who has only one truck, brand new MC, of course, you're going to charge him five, six. My going rate is eight to 10%. First of all, they get my experience. Secondary with my dispatch and my connections, because the brokers know already that I dispatch my company, other companies, they weigh win they, that time. And my negotiation skills are a little bit better than beginners. So they are getting more money, more growth. So they don't mind paying. But probably after 60 days, 90 days, we're going to revisit. 
and we're going to lower the rate or we're going to keep it the same if we like this relationship. It's all about how you represent her and what you can deliver. Can you ask somebody for 10%, 8%, 7% if this is your first week in the business? Not really. I don't think it's fair. Uh, secondary, what if the person start adding trucks? Now, instead of one truck, he has three trucks. Well, again, I have a volume. I am adding three trucks or four trucks or five trucks to my dispatch uh, 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 center, right? To my service. Of course, we can negotiate. Guys, it's like negotiating for the load. Is it possible to work outside of the country? Yes, it is. As long as you have English knowledge, as long as you have internet, and as long as you guys know what you're doing. And this is a message for all outside of the country dispatch services. Guys, please stop killing our market. We don't mind you taking our jobs as a dispatcher. We understand labor is way cheaper outside of the USA. But please educate yourself. I have so many private classes which uh, I've been reteaching guys from different countries. Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Ukraine, Moldova. I had people from uh, Mexico. I've been reteaching them because you guys don't realize that you need to know geography. You need to know our tools. You need to know our weather, our holidays. You need to know our equipment. I mean, I was surprised. People have been dispatching for a year or two and they don't even know. Well, we don't have certain trucks in uh, America. Yes, maybe they're common in Europe or maybe in Asia, but not in USA. How can you dispatch if you don't even understand time zoning? How can you dispatch when you don't realize the traffic? So that's why, guys, I don't mind all outsourcing. But whoever organizes those services, please, please educate yourself. Please Learn the market, learn the negotiation skills. Don't just book the load to get rid of the truck. Because for you, it doesn't matter. They are already paying you lower, right? So for you, that five, ten dollars a day doesn't make difference. But for the carrier who you're taking care of, for the market, it makes a difference. And that's why, guys, you know me, I am on the mission to change this industry. And you guys can sign up for my classes. We have them monthly. We have them usually on weekends. And actually, we start in one on Thursday. And we have also safety and compliance. We have IFTA calculation. And um, we're going to be adding the mastery class. And in July, we are adding freight brokerage class. It's been a long time for me preparing to that. But we're going to be adding all of these classes. I see a few, I see few questions here. So let me read them first. Well, first question: Do you teach how to charge carriers? I think I already opened them. First, you need to know, uh, learn uh, how to dispatch, what to do, and then we can talk about how to charge carriers. But usually, it's a flat fee. This is from the gross per week, or you can charge per truck. Again, independence. If this is a smaller carrier, just one, two trucks, or the guy has already five, six trucks, the price is going to vary. Another question, uh, what is a good workflow? I am stay-at-home mom and I want to be proactive. Well, we do have lots of um, women who co start coming to this business. And I can tell you this, as long as you have communication skills, as, as long as you can set up some kind of quieter room at your home and you learn how to do this, yes, you can make a living. When I started six years ago, yes, I was single mom with two kids. I started dispatching from my home. I actually set up in a living room, three screens, computer, and... Um, I've been dispatching and then I opened company and finally I moved to the office. Now with COVID, I moved back to the house. So you can dispatch in the office, inside of the house, as long as you have internet, uh, phone, and you can have uh, some simple software like Adobe DC for adding PDFs. 
and everything else is online it's live yes you can do it uh who can tell me what where is where more profitable well um profitable are you talking about which equipment makes more money are you talking about the region are you talking about the state what exactly are you asking me profitable well to be profitable you need to know the bottom dollar right and we're working on this in our classes what is the bottom dollar for each combination and combination can go like this truck your power unit right let me see how much does your truck cost do you have a trailer or you just only power only and you work for amazon are you the driver or you hiring the driver how much is equipment cost or it's paid off what is your insurance rate how much you pay for dispatch or you're gonna dispatch yourself so after you answer all this question you can realize how much does it cost you to break even that's why guys we are concentrating we are concentrating in trucking by rate per mile because we add tolls we add fuel cost we add equipment leasing or financing we add our driver salary our salary if you are owner operator dispatch cost safety cost and after we figure out you're gonna know well for me to break even my rate per mile has to be dollar 85 dollar 90 dollar 75 dollar 50 again how do you know that on your combination your driver your truck your trailer so everybody's dollar bottom dollar is going to be different for example if i am a carrier who's been in business for a few years my insurance cost is going to be lower than for somebody who's just starting brand new if you have company drivers and let's say you paying them 50 cents and somebody's paying them 65 and i can tell you 50 cents it's very hard to find nowadays and also it depends which area you at in chicago land i don't think you can find a driver who is gonna work for less than 60 62 cents so you have to add that cost right same with the dispatch service are you gonna hire me as a professional dispatcher then you're gonna have higher cost or you're gonna try to hire somebody who is outside of the country you're gonna save on the dispatch but you kind of gonna lose your gross in depends on your combination but what is profitable well profitable is making sure you understand dispatch basics and market the good dispatcher never gonna have the same route you can get comfortable let's say go chicago memphis memphis chicago but well what if the kansas start paying should you go same kind of distance 500 mile or maybe less the good dispatcher will change it due to the seasons due to the holidays due to the equipment types for example reefers they don't go to certain area but if you have step deck flatbed yes you're gonna go to amarillo you're gonna go to arizona you're gonna go to uh, nevada why because we have the military stations there uh in uh, south texas because we have those oil rigs but the reefer does it gonna go to really to nevada not really maybe to rain on the water when the cucumber season starts well when is the cucumber season starts well we have to check when is the california market starts right so usually it's going to be in uh july and it's going to be for a few weeks same with florida right now why do we go to florida right now well because we have produce seasons usually start from south florida so it's starting now in a few weeks it's going to shift to the middle upstate florida and then it's going to shift to georgia south carolina right so do you need to know this yes but to be profitable guys you need to make sure that you dispatch higher than your breaking point right so if your bottom dollar is dollar 85 to make profit you have to drive at least 210 220 230 per mile again it depends on the equipment so you know what let me show you something right now really fast 
let me show share the screen with you and see if you actually i'm gonna show the full screen and people are gonna ask me well how do you know what's going on if you guys are gonna be using any software you simply can go to thread lines right and you let's see what's going on right now the first column is dry vans so look at this how it changes this is a national data for loaded miles for all USA, 240 was in February. In March, it went to 265, April 260, May 263. This is our flatbed, step debt. Look at this. The prices are higher. And what's going on right now with the reefers? Wow, as I told you, what happened? Produce happening, right? Florida's waking up, Florida's shipping. Soon, California is going to start shipping. So that's how we guys know what's going on. What else can we know? Well, let's go back. People ask me, how would I know how to charge for this load? I'm going to switch to flu screen again. Let's say you are new dispatcher. Your dry van is somewhere in, I don't know, Memphis, right? Memphis, Tennessee. Well, you have load going to Newark, New Jersey, right? Newark, New Jersey. Let's see how much they have been paying for the last 15 days. Well, the median number was around $34.79. So this way, guys, you're going to know when you call calling about that load, and they are throwing number and you $3,2800. Well, it's already below national data. And do we want to be below the national data or should we be uh, higher than that? What do you think? Well, I think it's time for you guys to ask some questions. So please write the comments because um, time goes really fast. I did not even realize that it's already been almost an hour. And we're going to make sure that you guys subscribe to our channel and you guys have a chance to win our free class. So one more time, to win our class, you guys need to subscribe to our channel. You guys need to subscribe to our website and follow us on a Facebook. You will need, you will need to look at this. Uh, let's see. So here's our channel, right? Learn Dispatch Today. Most of you know. Learn Dispatch Today. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, today. You guys can find us on our website where all our classes are our upcoming schedule you can read about us reviews watch some videos and also you can sign up follow us on facebook the most important thing guys after you do those three steps you have to send us email and it's gonna go to learn dispatch today at gmail.com and you have to tell me why? Why should you win? I want to see. Well, because that's what something you've been looking. Maybe because you really want to do it, but you can uh, uh, find the money to sign up for the class. You guys can nominate someone. You can nominate somebody who you know really may be struggling or maybe that's going to be a surprise for them. It can be outside of the country. It can be inside of USA. If you guys take in classes already you can still nominate yourself because most of you already subscribe to my channels most of you already following me on facebook because you can use this for your next class well uh Our next safety class, guys, starts this um, Sunday. Again, for all previous students, you guys getting $100 off. For anybody who is going to be 
um, joining us. I am welcoming you because safety comes first. We have to know how to dispatch. We need to know how to negotiate, but without good safety, uh, it is not going to be possible. Also, our next uh, dispatch class, we have two coming up, one in May, one in June. So you guys can still sign up for Thursday class. And if not, then June class. Let's uh, answer Roxanne. Roxanne is asking, how many days of training is provided? Well, uh, dispatch training, it's five days. So this is five classes. It's not consecutive days. We do have in between days because you guys get in lots of homework, lots of quizzes, and you need to kind of adjust to information you need to practice load boards you need to finish paperwork so our classes are very intense each class is four hours but all my students already can tell you this that we never go four hours yes it's a little bit longer it's usually four and a half five hours just because i want to make sure you guys understand the subject i have to hear you see you answer your questions after each class, you guys receive PDFs with everything you see on the screen so you can read it, you can rewatch it. Also, some short videos on the topics are sent after class. But what is the best part about our training? Why are we different? Well, I can tell you this. I don't know how many trainings are going to give you a chance to have that practice day. When you guys are going to be calling, when you guys are going to be talking to real brokers and after each phone call, I will be discussing with you. So usually we're going to have two students. This is that extra class, semi-private private class. When you guys are going to be logging, when you guys are going to be representing my carriers, my company, and you're going to make that first phone call, guys. It's so much fun. It's stressful. I know tomorrow I have two students who are starting. I think uh, I saw Emmanuel earlier today. He's probably practicing. He just took the uh, load board login a few minutes, I mean, a half hour ago before the live, and he's practicing. It's always hard to be the first one in a class to practice, but I am not worried about it. My students are all intelligent people. They all goal-oriented. So no problem but yes it is stressful to make that first phone call but be believe me we have lots of fun we have that sassy attitude we have knowledge and we're gonna know when to say no or when to push our negotiation so five days four hours this is our uh, regular dispatch class we are adding our mastery class in june because lots of people who finish our classes they asking alex I really want to come uh, for another class because you guys kind of stuck with me. After dispatch class, you come to safety classes, then to IFTA classes, then how to open company. So, and we're gonna be adding the freight brokerage class in July. Well, mastery class, which is gonna start in June, that will be really hands-on class. It's like second part for people who still want to master those skills. It will be only morning class. Why? Because we will be calling, calling, talking, setting up. This will not be a theory anymore. So you're going to have that little preview. You're going to make those first 10, 20 phone calls in our regular class. But if you feel like that was not enough for you, or you really want to master, or you want to open dispatch service, and you're going to kind of uh, master those skills, that's a class for you. So in that class, we're not going to take more than five, six people just because it's going to be very more like already one-on-one, -on -one, me telling you more details, some tricks, some other extra information just for you to succeed and still, again, maybe become more sassy and maybe become more direct and maybe actually open up your horizons because, guys, you need to learn. 
you need to learn about a lot of things to become successful independent dispatcher or just a company dispatcher or if you want to open your trucking company so that's a question about how many days our safety class is four days again intense hands-on with all the paperwork with knowing how to file data cues with knowing how to pass that first audit this is something you guys need to take just just to make sure you know what you're doing that's four classes four hours each class uh, also we have webinars on how to open your company three hour webinar when i am telling you uh, one by one what to do how to do it you can save thousands of dollars you don't have to pay me to open your mc you don't have to pay nobody else to get your ifta account you don't have to pay nobody else to file your ucr for that 150 dollars guys you're gonna save lots of money that's first of all secondary you're gonna be educated before you start any business you need to know where you're going and what are you doing what else we have we have if the calculations if the calculations we have once in three months why because we do live filing in the class i refuse to teach if the without showing exactly how it's done live so that's why our next if the classes are going to be in july right because we need to take care of uh april may and june second quarter so in july we're gonna have two three classes for ifta where we really gonna be filing real ifta and all those permits new mexico new york um, oregon and uh, kentucky how to open account how to file so most of my girls who already finished the classes and some people who open the companies they just uh, finish our ifta classes because they are tired of paying somebody but also guys you need to know the paperwork because we have audits for irp accounts uh ifta ifta audits and of course new entered audits and any audits if you guys don't know how to keep your safety scores up what other questions before before we gonna answer um <laughs> somebody's asking in ukrainian можно українською написати на пошту так звичайно можна українською написати на пошту тільки пам'ятайте якщо ви будете виграти клас ви мусите розмовляти англійською so i just told somebody asked me if they can write to me in ukrainian or russian or bulgarian yes guys you can do so but if you win that class you do need to speak uh english otherwise uh you can give if you win you can award somebody else who can take the class but to take the class to participate and to succeed of course you guys need to learn few more questions yeah uh, the problem in industry is the cheap brokers and cheap freight well the problem in trucking industry is um not cheap brokers not cheap freight the problem in uh, trucking is uneducated owners of the companies uneducated dispatchers uneducated drivers guys it's all in our hands if i am gonna say no to the load because i know that this is not profitable if you're gonna say no if 10 of us gonna say no then they have to pay higher so actually let's be realistic and i am very direct a lot of times we are killing market with our own hands a lot of times we don't have enough people who can dispatch your um, trucks and they just want to get rid of the truck so what's happening that first phone calls they take they just take it without even asking for more a lot of times they're asking for fifty hundred dollars extra when the load is like 3500 well you need to understand that you have to ask for six seven hundred sometimes thousand dollars more because that they have budget there do you think if i would be a broker would i just give you my top dollar right away no i would be looking for the desperate dispatchers and it's a lot out there so the problem is not the cheap freight 
and a cheap brokers. Guys, let's be responsible. So we need to step up. And that's why I am on a mission. So if you with me, guys, let's change this industry. Let's make trucking profitable. Let's make traffic uh, to, to trucking good, uh, good again. Sorry, you know what? When I get excited, sometimes I <laughs> don't speak clearly. So, uh, guys, we can uh, change this. We can improve and we can negotiate. And again, play A, B, and C. Changing. Maybe instead of long haul, doing a short haul. Maybe instead of going to East Coast, maybe you should stay on Midwest. Maybe you need to know your shippers, receivers. And right now, guys, well, market's been great. So you cannot complain. The problem is also every time market goes down, everybody quits trucking. Guys, stop quitting trucking because where are you guys going to go? I make money as a dispatcher. Owner operators make money as dispatcher. Drivers make money as a dispatcher. In trucking, we all make money. So this is just a myth. I'm done with trucking. Market went down. And then what? Two weeks later, you're back in trucking. Well, here you need to learn how to manage your earnings. Again, this is going to be a mastery class. How to separate those earnings. Have the maintenance account. Have the extra money you guys have to put every time for registration. For when market goes down and market does go down. Again, due to the season, due to the holidays, due to the COVID. Look at that. COVID happened. It was something unpredictable. But tracking is not going anywhere. And I am not going anywhere because I am still on a mission. And hopefully my students are going to help me to say this, to change this. When is the next live stream, Alex? Well, on Mondays. Every Monday we're going to have a live stream. And today, guys, was introductory. So today's was just knowing me, uh, introducing myself, telling where I come from, uh, what is the dispatch training center, what is my YouTube channel, why I am doing that. Starting next uh, Monday, we're going to have topics. So this is going to be very good free one hour for anyone who wants to learn. If you are a driver, if you owner operator, or maybe you're just a housewife now who wants to see, maybe I can help my husband, or maybe you're just looking for different uh, career. Guys, in trucking, you can make money. And I am going to be helping you, and I will be announcing every time what are we going to be working on next Monday. So thank you so much for joining, and I can tell you this. Next Monday, we're going to be working on creating carrier setup packet and how to get set up. So we're going to do live. It's going to be more intense. Make sure you subscribe. We also add in membership. Finally, we are partner with YouTube. We went through all the hoops. We got enough subscribers. We got enough hours. So that's why now we can do more. So we're going to have memberships and they start like $3.99, the basic membership. The second membership is like $14.99. And of course, we have VIP $49.99 a month where you guys going to have a list of special videos when we're going to be working on all the apps, uh, brokers apps, when we're going to be discussing topics in details. For our VIP subscribers, you guys going to be receiving extra PDFs monthly. For some of you, you guys going to have uh, live sessions one on one. So I am on a mission and hope you are. I hope you guys enjoy my live video and I hope you guys going to share and you guys going to subscribe and we're going to get that winner. So we're going to have that winner by next class. So we're going to make sure that after we receive all the emails, after we'll see uh, proof that you guys subscribe, the next Monday, we're going to have our winner. You can use it for yourself. You can use it for somebody else. But I want to make sure in your email you stated, well, my name is Alexandra. I would love to receive the training because I am looking for the new job. Or maybe I am a driver and I decided to learn how to dispatch. Or maybe I want to improve my safety skills. So we're going to use the app, guys. 
We're going to make sure that everybody's entered and we're going to do it live next Monday at 6 p.m. Uh, any other questions? Well, uh, please tell us about your problematic loads when happening so hard to load. Well, problematic loads, again, pre-planning, guys. Problematic loads are coming from not pre-planning, not knowing your market, even the day of the week. Like, for example, I gave example today. Today is Monday, Chicago land. We have a lot of Eastern Europeans who had Easter yesterday. I was celebrating Easter. So lots of drivers came home to spend time with their family. Lots of dispatchers were preparing to celebrate Easter. Do you think they were worried on Friday what they're going to do on Monday? No, they were worried about going to church, buying the uh, holy bread, and just enjoying the family, which is normal thing to do. So lots of us did not pre-plan, right? And today, most of you felt that, right? That problematic day, Monday morning in Chicagoland, and not just Chicagoland. So pre-planning due to holiday. Well, problematic loads can be maybe your driver have been loaded for too long and now you cannot make transit and you deliver into the strict facility. Well, what do you do? You have your duties. You communicate with the broker. You need to make sure that you reschedule. You do that first phone call. So you think analytically what has to be done well first of all you need to make sure that appointment for delivery is rescheduled if it is strict uh, appointment if you already pre-booked the load don't you think you need to advise your next broker asap because it's better for them to know you're not picking up the load today than last minute because you are hoping for the miracle problematic loads come from different things but uh, once again, if you want to become professional, I would not call it problematic. This is a challenges. Challenges we have everywhere in any industry. So challenges are usually sold with what? With skills. Challenges are sold with knowledge. So if you know the markets, if you know your plan A, B, and C, and what can you do? Uh, for example, tri -hole, right? We were discussing on Saturday class. Well, we had a guy who was delivering on East Coast on Saturday. He has to come back to Chicago by Monday. It could have been very easy for me just to book one load, Newark, uh, New Jersey to Chicago. Well, probably the most I could get at that market would be 16, 1700. Probably not even that because everybody wanted to still get back uh, on Sunday to enjoy their Easter, right? So try haul. What did we do instead? Well, we took the short load to Penn, Ohio, Zenithville, Ohio. Well, $1,200, right? 200. He was actually in Allentown, PA. 253 miles, $1,200. He delivered on Sunday. On Sunday, he got loaded. And today, he delivered in Bolingbrook, Illinois, 950. So 1,200 plus 950, we are at what? 2150 instead of 1,600. Well, you would think, well, that's not a big difference. Well, it is because $500, $600 grows a week multiplied by four weeks. Here you go. You're talking about 2,000, 2,500 difference a month, a month. So you're talking about how much? 27,000 a year. And that's try hold, the option try hold, knowing where you can break the load to get to destination at same time, but making more profit. And guys, how are you guys going to do it? Well, you have all those options and you just need to know your tools, right? Market condition, lane market, red lines, all of this. Look at the zones. Well, guys, you need to learn the zones, right? You need to understand why is market pain? Why do we have this description right here in the dead? How many of you are using that? Why do you need to know the Alabama market? Why do you need to know cities like Birmingham, Chattanooga, Decatur, Mobile? Well, because that's where production, that's where industry, that's where those farms are. So what are you going to try to do? Well, you're going to try to go closer to those cities because, again, if they have a big market there, that means they have production. We're delivering, we're picking up.
But on the other hand, we're talking about New York City, right? Do they have a real production? Well, they have a big density of population. We have to bring them food. We have to bring them clothes. But that's not much land to put the manufacturer there, to, to have the uh, farm there, right? So that means the loads are going to pay cheaper. And yes, it's not fair. Who said that trucking is fair? I wish trucking would fair. I would not be teaching classes. It would be so easy. In a perfect world, guys, I would love to have this. If I could create trucking industry and I would be in charge, like, you know, in charge of all trucking industry, I would do this. If you are a reefer, you have to get paid three dollars per mile if you are driving you have to get paid 260 no matter what if you are flatbed step deck it depends on tarping or not tarping you have to pay three to four dollars a mile in this case we would not be dispatchers because we would be just arranging movements from a to b and who would be the winner somebody who can find closer loads right really easy it's not really dispatching same going on for example with amazon and I, I love my uh, friends who run Amazon. But guys, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Amazon is not dispatching. That's why most of the Amazon carriers, they have dispatch outside of the country. Because most of the time, they just click in. Click, 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 click. They don't even know why they clicking, where are they clicking, what's going on, right? They just click in. So dispatch is not really, uh, that's not really dispatch because it's no negotiation there. If the Amazon said that it's going to be $395.11, that's it. If they're going to tell you this is where you pick up, that's where you deliver, that's it. It's no negotiation. So yes, Amazon is a great way to make money because they took over. They're one of the biggest logistics in USA right now. And why they don't want a middle name? Uh, middleman in the middle because they don't want to share their profits plus they want to regulate how much they are paying right because if they would have third-party pl brokers in the middle what would happen they would have to pay higher probably this way they know well today this week we have click 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 all those desperate dispatchers clicking 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 because they bought so many trucks that they have to just click on something so what's happening Amazon is watching your clicking and the rates goes down. And then you guys all quitting Amazon. And then you come to reefer market because now the reefer's paying. Then you're quitting reefer because reefer goes down. Then you go to step decks. And that's is a circle. This is a part of industry and I love it. But I can tell you this, guys, make up your mind what you want to do and just improve yourself. Okay. I don't care what kind of equipment you run. Which area you go, you can be profitable as long as you know what you are doing. Once again, guys, sign up and hopefully we're going to have the winner. I'll see all of you on Monday. And if you guys have any suggestions on Monday, what topics you would like me to cover after next Monday, I would like to see it. Please uh, you can leave the comments under, under this video because I will keep it on the YouTube. And then I will try to go over that subject. So uh, subscribe to our channel, right? Follow us on the dispatch. Sign up for our classes. Go to our website, learndispatchtoday.com. And it's been me, Alex. Your sassy dispatch girl. Sorry that I took a little bit longer than an hour. I uh, I would love to change this industry. I would love I would love you guys to succeed, and I cannot wait to meet my new class on Thursday. All my guys who are studying right now in our Saturday class, we have twenty two students. Uh, please. Keep finishing your homework. Tomorrow, I cannot wait for my practice day. We're going to be calling. Maybe we're going to be recording and we're going to be sharing. If you guys think that it was um, informative, please let me know because uh, I am really looking for people to change trucking industry. Yeah, see you on Thursday. Oh, my God. I did not even meet my student yet. I guess he's watching my live and he's from Europe. 
Yes, I'll see you on Thursday. So now you can see probably you already saw me on Facebook, but now you know how the class is going to go. It's going to be intense. It's going to be pushy because it's me, Alex, and Ryan already knows Alex have that sassy attitude and we going to succeed. We're going to change this industry together, guys. Without you, I cannot do it. Once again, appreciate you, love you all, and I just want you to succeed. Thank you again. I will be done with my broadcasting. Please make the comments. Tell me what you want to learn. And after probably next Monday, we're going to uh, work, as I told you already, on our setups, how to create career setup. And we probably going to do one setup. So if there are a particular broker, you want to see how to get set up. But I think we're probably going to go through TQL or CH Robinson because those are bigger brokers, which you can work with them even after one day uh, having your MC active. So probably we're going to concentrate on them because the reality is when you are a new carrier, you're going to be working with just few brokers. Once again, uh, thank you, Titus, uh, for your kind words. Thank you, all my students, for reviews, for sharing. I really appreciate you. And again, today was the introductory and starting every Monday, I want you to revisit us. I want you to refresh and I want you to work on your skills. So we will be bringing the guests. So this is my plan. Every, not next Monday, but every following Monday, we will be bringing the guests from insurance, from factoring, from ELD manufacturing, for people who sell trucks, anything to do with trucking, anything to do with trucking, we guys going to take care of this. And sometimes, yes, life's going to go a little bit longer. Uh, well, guys, we are here to learn. Once more time, great advice. Thank you, Julian. Um, I love you. Please subscribe support our channel because we want to support uh, you guys back. We always going to have prizes. We're going to have free education, but also we want to support some of people who cannot afford our classes. So we will be working on getting some, raise some money and maybe helping some single mom to get the class, maybe find a new job, maybe some single parent who's struggling, maybe somebody who had disadvantages in life Guys, you can make money. You can become successful as long as you have goals. And if I could have done it, even with my Ukrainian accent, you guys can do it for sure. So I love you all. See you next Monday. Bye, guys. Oh, we are blessed to have you. Thank you, guys. I am blessed to have you. Thank you, Dewanda. I'll see you guys soon. Till next Monday. Bye.